William Regal denies snaking out the competition during his AEW tenure. Plus, we have an update on the Bad Blood main event and the latest on a returning NXT star. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. So last night was the last NXT on its current home. It'll debut on the CW next week. And there was lots of people reflecting on their favorite moments of this particular NXT era, including William Regal. Yes, uh, he basically denied snaking out the competition during his AEW tenure. Uh, it started with William Regal reflecting on the years he worked on NXT ahead of the show's move, as you say, to the CW. And he said... I was part of the very beginning of WWE's NXT. I'm still involved, but not as much as I was. Thank you to H. I guess that's Triple H. Uh, I think that or Hardcore Holly. Yes. Uh, Sean, which I guess is Sean Stasia. No. <laughs> um, thank, you to, thank you to Triple H, Shawn Michaels and Matt Bloom and everyone else that fought the fight for making a one-hour program on the WWE Network to traveling the world and has been making new stars and memories for the fans. It continues today. It doesn't matter what the color scheme is or was or has been. We changed the wrestling world, although few will want to admit it. It's been the best part of a 41-year career being NXT to the core. This prompted a fan to say that Regal was snaking out the competition when he went to AEW and he didn't go quietly. He did not do go quietly into that long good night, did William Regal. He said FYI, although it serves some people's agenda and having a massive amount of people who work who work with AEW that can only back me up, I went to AEW to help because Brian Danielson asked me to. Please find me one person who can say otherwise. I arrived at 10am until 6.15pm to train anyone who wanted to come, apart from going to the restroom and refilling my water container. I never attended a single production meeting as I knew if I were to stay there. I needed people to realize I was only there to help, nor did I ask a single question about anybody that works there's contract status. I helped at the ring with what any of the talent needed. I showered, got into a suit by 6.30 and then watched on the monitor with everyone else. I'm giving you the right to ask anyone who works backstage or the talent the right to ask them if I did anything but help with no agenda. Feel free. I also didn't call Tony when his mum was ill. This was something that had been reported at the time as well. He called me and as soon as he told me where he was, I ended the phone call and we spoke two weeks later. FYI, my deal was up on December 28th. That is when I left. These are all facts I can prove. Anyone trying to twist this has the right to check this out. I am friendly with 60% plus of the talent and the backstage crew. Feel free to do some research. So Regal there strongly defending himself against these accusations that he went to AEW to scope out the opposition, maybe snap up some contracts. There was there. a bit of conversation about contract tampering mm -hmm. and, and allegations of that thrown around while Regal was there. He is strenuously denied that there. And he's, he's absolutely got the right to do so. And I think the fact that he's defended himself in such specific and detailed terms, although we can't prove anything, I think it suggests that he is very annoyed and hurt by the accusations that he did so, when in his mind, he was just doing a favor to Brian Danielson, finding work elsewhere, and then he came back to WWE when the opportunity presented itself to him. So I think, fair play, he's allowed to say that. The timing of it all came when basically uh, Regal was let go from WWE, which we were all really shocked by. Yes. Uh, this is whilst Vince McMahon was uh, still in control of the company, uh, Regal was let go. It was not long after he had joined AEW, if memory serves, that there was the power shift officially in WWE that saw Paul Levesque take control. And Paul Levesque and Regal have been friends for a long, long time. So obviously there would have been a desire on Regal's part to work with Triple H once again in more of an official capacity. However, he was bound and tied to AEW. And of course, uh, this is Regal here clearing the air with how all those events went down and those uh, those allegations that don't seem to go away that Regal was there as, a, as almost like a double agent. And I don't think they'll ever go away as long as the wrestling online sphere is so divided and so partisan with fans of both sides or maybe against other sides and everything. I think he'll always be accused of that, but I think fair play to him for at least addressing these accusations so that now, whenever anybody says it again, people can point to this and say, no, Regal refutes that, so fair enough. I hope he goes back now just to sharing videos of his lizards mm -hmm. and plugging Mick Miller gigs on Twitter, which yeah. is basically everything else that he does. Uh, now, NXT is debuting on the CW next week. It looks like the NWA deal with the CW is over as a 
a result of it. You want a war? No. <laughs> so, NWA Power viewers have noticed that the CW app is listing all Power episodes on the app as expiring in six days, which is coincidentally when NXT is scheduled to debut on the network on October 1st. It was originally understood that WWE doesn't have exclusivity in its contract with the CW, but it doesn't... I mean, the signs seem bad for for the NWA there. Yeah, it's not. It was one of those where there was hope that they would have more of a presence with part of a CW deal, uh, maybe something more on uh, in a more accessible manner as opposed to being landlocked to the CW app. I, I know that it's a difficult one to sell on people when it's something that is exclusively on an app that is only available in parts of the world. So it was a difficult one for them to push. Uh, I think genuinely, a lot of it, the best work that NWA did, I've tried to keep across as much as I can was when they came back and they were putting ed- episodes on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Everybody loved those as well. Yeah. Uh, it was had the real old school feel and everything. Things went a bit off the rails since then at certain times, didn't they? Um, and I, I think that, to be fair, even if, N- if even if the NWA had been carrying on its momentum and had done really well, if, if a WWE brand is going to move on to the same network as you, it's always going to be difficult. So I don't know how much of it really has to do with their creative downturn. It's a, it's an interesting one whether or not it would be more difficult because both, because you know we're seeing WWE move on to Netflix next year. Yeah. And there's a general vibe that there might be a call for other wrestling content to kind of come off the back of that if you see what I mean. Right, because I understand. We've got Heels that has just moved over to Netflix which is the wrestling drama series. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously the wrestlers documentary about OVW did really well when it landed on Netflix from all optics. The Iron uh, Claw. The Iron Claw uh, as well and it's one of those where potentially you could even see th- there is a room to have more wrestling on these other platforms where new wrestling is coming through. So it could be a rising tide lift all boats kind of situation. It could be a rising mm. tide lift all boats type situation. It'll be very situation. interesting to see what, uh, what, what consequences this move has from WWE on Netflix because it could well change the, in- the entire industry. The entire industry could change yeah. forever uh, and we're, we're keeping an eye on what's going to happen next weekend uh, for the WWE side of the industry as Bad Blood is next week Weekend, but there is still some question marks over what the main event of the show will be. There's been conflicting reports about what that main event will be, uh, and the most recent one is from PW Insider. Now, it had previously been reported that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns tag match against the Bloodline, Solus Co and Jacob Fatu, would headline the show. But PW Insider says, one of the major discussions backstage at Raw this week circled around what will be closing the Bad Blood pay-per-view. We are told that the initial plan as of months ago was to build a pay-per-view around the idea of the anniversary anniversary of the first ever WWE Hell in a Cell bout in 1997, since the event this year lands on the same date. That would have meant CM Punk vs Drew McIntyre should have closed the show, because it's Hell in a Cell match. There's been a push in certain circles of the company though, that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns teaming for the first time ever, and in a city, Atlanta, that has significance to each, should headline the show against the Bloodline. We are told that the final decision has not been made still. Mm, it'll be one on the f- one at first, one on last, I would yeah. say. I thought the Hell in a Cell. Oh, no. I think it, I would agree with you. I think it should be Hell in a Cell for historic reasons and everything. But if I look at it more objectively and which one I think they'll go with, I reckon after that video package thing on SmackDown with Cody and Roman, that feels like the big one that they're pouring all their resources into. Yeah. And, the, and it's very, it's a very Triple H main event. It's like WrestleMania Night 1 or it's like uh, the match where Roman returned at SummerSlam. These big storyline heavy, slow paced tag matches. And I feel like Triple H won't be able to resist having that as the headliner, regardless of what old heads like (laughs) us think. (laughs) I'm ready for that final match on Bad Blood to feature Cody Rhodes tagging Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns taking nine days to get into the <laughs> ring soaking up the crowd in it and then I, locking up I'm looking forward to that match it'll as be well a good, it'll I, be a good match once the motors get going I'm especially interested in seeing how they present Jacob Fatu because uh, I think it's weird to say given that one of the opponents is WWE Champion and one of the opponents is Roman Reigns but I think Jacob Fatu is the least likely man in that tag match to take the pinfall mm. I think you can they, he might lose Solo might get pinned you could bet your house on Jacob not getting pinned sure it's part of me that thinks let's have Jacob pin Cody. Oh, 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 oh a spanner in the works. Oh, oh. Spanner right in the works. Uh, I, I don't know if one will open because if you open with the, do you think the cell match could land like in the middle of the I, show? I, like I opine, being... when when this was talked about the other day on the news, I kind of opined that it might end up in the new, in the middle as well. Mm. Yeah, in the middle for diddle, uh, as opposed to the start or the, uh, ideally could, the end. 
Oh, you could maybe now that the shark cage stipulation's happening in in the Liv Morgan Rhea Ripley match with Dom. That's a fun crowd pleasing opener, isn't it? I guess that, that girl is a real crowd pleaser. Who's that? Or oh, is that a lyric? Yeah. What's it from? Uh, I don't. I could, yeah, off the top of my head, oh. I can't remember. But you'll tell me in the comments. But my brain, my music brain, just went. That girl is a real crowd pleaser. Oh, it's Ray Shrep. Yeah, I know the song. You know yeah. the one. No me. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that one. Thank you very much. No. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's <laughs> lovely, that is. Are <laughs> you having a silly mood, me? Oh, silly mood. This is silly. <laughs> PW Insider. <laughs> this is silly. This is silly. God, I hope this isn't a serious it story. It's silly because it's based around Santino Morella. Ah, oh, he is silly. And he is silly. So when he debuted for TNA, he went under the name Santino Morella. And Anthem put in a request for the trademarks for the name Santino Morella, which mm. is obviously a WWE name. PW Insider say that on the 19th of this month, WWE requested a 90-day extension to oppose Anthem Wrestling Exhibition's registration of the Santina Morella trademark. It was obviously originally created by WWE, and after the trademark lapsed, uh, Morella and TNA bought a, well, put in a, a, a request to take it as their own. Uh, and it looks like WWE have gone, well, hang on a minute, mm. stop the car. Might not happen. It can't change his name now, surely. No, although I don't know. Does this mean because we had we, we've had this kind of um, close partnership between TNA and specifically the NXT brand? Mm. We even saw on a recent TNA pay per view, I think it was Victory Road, we saw a backstage segment with Santina Morella and his daughter Ariana Grace, oh, who's currently lovely. an NXT superstar, and they've both got. She's, she's inherited his comedic timing. She's very funny. No shenanigans. Yes. Um, but I think it's this is like the first bit of friction I've heard of since that partnership started mm. to make itself clear. So I wonder what's going on there. We'll keep an eye on that one as we've been keeping an eye on Nikita Lyons. Stop it. Uh, she shared a video update on Twitter showing her working out pretty much full speed at the gym with the boxing bag getting into some sparring, uh, getting ready to get back in there. Yeah, she's had horrendous luck with injuries recently and commented re and commented that she's now even, having spent <laughs> eight months rehabilitating her left ACL because she tore her right ACL before that. Uh, there's no return date confirmed for Nikita Lyons, but despite the heavy knee brace, as Tom said, she looks full speed in the gym. She looks ready to go. Um, and, I mean, at the minute, the NXT women's division is pretty stacked. It's cooking, as uh, Vic Joseph said last night. It is, especially at the top. But I think mm. a little bit further down, you could easily slot her back in and reintroduce her to the fold. I think that's a nice way to bring her through. I do like that a lot. Uh, it's it's interesting watching TNA and NXT cross promote at the moment. Part of WWE's wider plan with, with working with other places. Case in point next month, PWA Coliseum in Australia sees the return of Grayson Waller. Mm. A WWE star making his first appearance as a WWE contracted talent for a show, uh, an indie show in Australia. I had a lovely chat with Grayson's opponent, uh, the a man who was under the wing uh, of Grayson Waller in Jimmy Townsend. Great to catch up with Jimmy. Get to know the guy who's going to be face great, facing Grayson Waller at PWA's biggest show of the year on an all-new Desert Island Graps. It's waiting for you on the podcast feed. And if you're a Patreon, you can watch the video version as well. Very nice. Lovely you. guy is oh, old Jimmy Townsend. I hope he wins. I hope he wins as that well. Because Grayson's always a rotter. He is such a rotter. Mm. And I hope Jimmy Townsend gets a big dub over a dub dub E guy. Yes. That would be nice. Mm. For the latest wrestling news at any time, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.